Welcome friends to part two. Part one was about getting us to this point, the point at which we're ready to rock and have a little bit of fun. I didn't want to cheat and pre-prepare anything. I wanted to come at the space raw uh, so that you guys can see exactly every last little thing we do here to create mm, 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 the good stuff. You're going to love all this. I've noticed a lot of the swords and a lot of the objects and items that are created for Kenshi um, struggle with their UV maps. Um, or they're not perfectly overlaid or representative of the object that they want. And I just figured if anybody knew the skills we're about to go through here, um, those items would improve overnight, you know. And my hope is that everybody gets to see this video will have that shot, you know, making something truly special and clever. So the first thing I want to talk about with you guys in creating um, the perfect sword, the perfect mesh, is UV maps. Now, you're making a mod. Um, it may come to your mind that you can't just go straight in from scratch and knock together something by eye from imagination alone. Um, you'd be quite right. Professional artists from around the world use things called reference images. And the professional individuals that made the games that we love and the objects and the models that we love um, they will have used references too. So, if you're making a modern, you, you don't have a large folder full of reference photographs and pictures like I do. You might want to go and, and, and grab some of them, you know, the, the things you're really going to need. Um, I'm making a Valeria sword. Here you can see a copyrighted image from an advert for somebody else's sword. Um, I don't want the picture, which may well be copyrighted. Um, I want the shape of this sword. There will be plenty of images out there that I can um, nip here, nip there, take a photograph and create a UV map. Now, a UV map is essentially everything we're going to need to create that item laid out flat. So it's not on... Um, a broader surface. Swords are very easy, but uh, I've been busy and I, I, I popped together this UV map out of, of certain separate elements. This will perfectly serve our needs when we come to making both the scabbard and the sword. Uh, I may have time to do the scabbard as well um, and show you how that's done and put the whole item together, but it may well be I have to draw it short at showing you how the sword is done um, and maybe pop up the scabbard as a separate video. But this is the UV map. Um, the beauty of GIMP is unlike Blender, we can go straight from the file directory system here. We'll right click Valeria Sword UV map. We'll open with GNU image manipulation program. And it will come straight up inside our GIMP. We can check with Alt return the scale and the image properties here. Uh, this is 650 by 650 pixels. Uh, it's not a particularly high resolution UV map, but we shouldn't trip over it too heavily. We should get away with that and it should look super fly. Um, the bigger this file is, it will be a DDS when you save it, uh, the more your your file will bloat. As you get up to your 2000, 4000 resolution DDS files, you're looking at 100, 150 megabytes. Um, most mods aren't even that big, let alone one DDS. So always bear that in mind. This is going to be one part of our UV map and form our diff map. But what we're going to want to create the sword itself is a reference image. So to create the shape of the Valeria sword that we want, this scabbard here is just drawn from a screenshot of the film itself uh, with Valeria climbing up a wall. I thought it was a really good image 
um, and it gave a good sense for the proportions um, of the sword that she carries. Uh, zoomed out, you get a lot better definition, a lot better idea, and as well as specifics and cheats and overlays, we always want to have a good idea uh, of the overall shape of the object that we're creating. Okay, let's try and have some fun, shall we? Now you'll notice all the reference images are stored in my Conan folder here, in my Blender Kenshi. That'll make my um, my files easier to find when I open them up in Blender because it's not such a simple file structure in Blender. So I'm going to move this just slightly over to the side. Now we'll close that down instead. Okay, great. If I want to select an item in Blender, I'm going to right click it. I can I can select not only bodies but also armature rigs as well. Meshes or three-dimensional files will have your triangular little symbol here. Armature rigs will have your little human body symbol there. Most scenes will load in with a lamp and a camera. This Kenshi um, template doesn't have that, but you can always add them in with the add menu down here. Cameras, lamps, meshes, anything you like. Uh, that's when you're in object mode. Hmm. We'll select the sword. We're going to push Shift D. And we're going to create a duplicate of that sword. Move along a little bit. So you can see this is the Kenshi Vanilla Sword. If you want the sword that you're saving into the game to line up properly with the hand of the man or woman that's going to be holding it, you want the origin point, this little orange dot here, to be in the center of your Kenshi rig when you save it. And this is a really good reference here, this horse chopper. It's a good sized blade. If we push tab while we're in object view, we get the edit view. Now the edit view is extremely important for UV maps, stiff maps, whatever you have. Um, what we want to do in order to be able to use our UV maps and to edit UV maps and to create reference folders is to get our image viewer up down in the right hand corner here with the little arrows and we're simply going to drag that across and we'll open up a new window. This little box here is in fact the option drop down for what displays in any given three-dimensional window and you'll notice there's one in the corner of almost every menu screen um, around and you can change any menu screen you like into any one of these other menu screens um, blender can be split into four it can be split into eight can, whatever you like whatever is useful for me i generally have two windows open in the main plus my properties menu over here um, we're going to change this to the image editor now as you can see we've got a 2d image overlay here um, just xy coordinates which is what our UV map says and if we want to port in something that we're going to use whether it's a UV map or a reference file we'll put it in through here so what we're going to do now is we're going to get our UV map open and in the image viewer and this is what our sword is gonna is gonna look like if we can render it in blender then we don't have to load Kenshi and wait 15 minutes to test our object to see how it looks so let's open an image shall we my blender kenshi folder conan all my reference picks are in here but what did i call them <laughs> good question really organized mops I was watching your tutorial video and I noticed it took longer than it should have because you weren't as organized as I expect you to be at quarter to three in the morning, Mops. Uh, dee -dee -dee -dee. Where are you, my reference pick? I just showed it to you. Valeria Sword GV map, Valeria Sword Ref. Valeria Sword Ref, that was an intelligently named thing. 
Valeria's sword. No, that's not it. <laughs> that's the high definition one. Mm -hmm. I hate recording tutorial videos. Valeria Sword UV map in the Conan. Oh, where is it? There you are. Okay, forgive me for looking inept in front of the whole world stage of professional modders and anybody else who might be judging my efforts here tonight, but hopefully by the end of the video you will have forgiven me. You will notice the top here has a little plus icon this will open your properties menu i'll show you why that's important also the n key november key will open that up and close it up for you and um, the reason this is important will become plain very very soon i will now go into edit mode you will see every vertex here along the face and the side of the weapon is now highlighted and it is represented over here. If I push L over one specific shape, I select that whole shape. As you can see, this is one side of the blade here. And it represents exactly and overlays with the elements of the blade there. If you look closely, you can see these two strips here are represented by these two strips here. And they'll be double sided. There'll be two of them, one for either side of the blade. This will be the handle, just here. So the UV map overlays over your diff map and it will coordinate every last part that's underneath this element here and project it onto there. Now as you can see, it doesn't line up. Um, and for kicks, let's just see what it looks like. Um, I want this untextured object now to have the textured UV map of this here. How do I do it? Okay. We're going to go over to this circle here. This determines the materials that make up the textures that are going to be um, projected onto your sword. We are going to click New. You'll see a big white ball appear here. Happy days. Then we're going to move across to textures. And again, we're going to click new. And we're going to scroll down. And you'll see this image file here. And we're going to click that little picture at the side. If we've already loaded something into our image viewer over here, it will become available. Now, down here in the center, we're going to move it from solid to texture view and you will see wonderfully projected onto that object now a confused mess of uncoordinated images that exactly lie underneath its UV map here. What we want to do is make an object that is exactly the same shape as this UV map and to model it over the top of that as we create our UV overlay. How are we going to do it? Okay, this is the properties menu. It's useful for seven and a half thousand things, one of which I'm going to explain to you now. Down here, background images. Let's tick that, shall we? And let's open the drop down menu and add an image. It's not set yet, but it will be visible when we do set it. Let's open a file up, shall we? Now, I mentioned to you earlier on that I created a reference image to make the shape that we are going to be constructing here today. I lined it up. That's Valeria Sword Ref. But there seems to be some funny issues with... Uh, there she is. Yeah, naming conventions are not working for me this evening. 
So, it's invisible at the moment. You're in the wrong view. You're going to want to be able to overlay exactly what you want and to be able to des design your item over the top of a reference item. So you're going to want, un want to understand the views. Five of your numpad will take you into and out of orthographic view. One looks at it straight from the front. Three looks at it straight from the left. Seven looks at it straight from the top. One front, three side, seven top. If you think you're looking at the wrong side, you've got a great option here. If you hold control down, one will look at the back, three will look at the right, seven will look up from the bottom. So you've always got a way of looking exactly along one axis, whether it's Y or Z or X. Okay, let's put it to a left-hand view here. See this image over here? I know it's, uh, I know it's quite blurry, but it's an exact replica of this PNG here. This one's been kept diagonal because I wanted to preserve the quality um, of the head there, which is lost when you rotate with interpolation at this resolution, sadly. So I was stuck with um, the blade at this sort of angle, but as long as I make the blade right, it will overlay just perfectly. But I'll show you how that works. We can manipulate images uh, in, in, in several ways, but I suppose the most important controls will be down here. I've opened up the image, and as you can see, if I look at it from 1, 3, 7, that image is always the same. But from experience, I know I do not want this image over here. So we can move it horizontally by stages and phases out of the way. We can move it up and move it down. We can even rotate it by scales. We don't have to click the buttons. We can just push zero there and square it away. That's great if you just want to move it around 90 degrees without um, breaking your finger. Scale. Oh yes, we can scale it. Oh yes, believe me, sir. What are we doing, friends? How good is this going to be? Now, let's not obsess over lining the picture up with the sword. Remember, we can pick up the sword and move it over the reference pick. We are at no point restricted or committed to anything. Now, I'm going to look to make this a little larger. Remember that although the um, horse chopper is not the sword we're making, it is a really nicely proportioned Kenshi weapon and it will give you a good understanding of what your weapon's going to look like, do, what scale it's going to be um, once you put it in the hand of somebody in Kenshi. Yeah, that's pretty good, pretty good. Now we look along the blade. It's clear to me that there are three tiers of width here that we're going to need to care about. You've got your long flat bit right along here. And then you've got the tapering down to the edge. So although we don't have an accurate side shot or front or top shot um, from this blade, we can make a very accurate image from it. So... And try and remember what I'm doing while I'm talking to you, friends. What I would do generally at this point is delete this blade here. Um, oh, how do I do that? Well, let's push L. That will select all of one specific element that you're pointing at in a given object. Delete key. You can delete vertices, which are these little which are the little dots you can see here. You can delete faces, which are the spaces in between the dots. And if we look at face select here, oh, the dots aren't showing up and I don't even know why. Oh well, never mind. I'm sure it will come up later. 
Or you can delete edges, which are the lines in between the vertices, only edges and faces, and leave the vertices there intact, uh, or only the faces, leaving the vertices and the edges intact attached you will you will use all of this as we go you know as if you get more and more comfortable with blender and the tools um they've all got a, a reason that you might want to use them but in this case i'm going to delete vertices it's the most complete delete that you can do and by deleting vertices you automatically delete those faces and those edges between them i don't need this handle l select all now if i wanted to just move the handle I push the G key, grab, move, grab, delete, vertices, gone, thank you. Back to my reference picture now. I like the handle just the length it is, the handle's horse chopper that is. I push L, and as you can see, it's selected the whole handle. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. What am I going to do? I only want to take this ring off of the bottom here. So what I'll do is I'll select all. Push the B key. Hold down Shift. See how I've deselected one side of this with the, with the shift B command if I hold down B or just push B and select that I'm going to reselect it so shift B deselects B selects it's the box function you'll notice I only selected one half of this sword handle what if I just want to select right the way through it and not um, not be blocked by the physical entity of the mesh. See the white box over the little black box down here? Limit selection to visible. Let's deselect that. And now we'll see those dots I was talking about earlier for the faces. And you can see right through the object. You can select right through the object now as well. I want to retain that handle. So let's B, Shift, Select. Now I can grab, sorry, that's still connected. Face select. These two objects are connected. I'm going to delete it. Gone. Oh. Why is this selected? <laughs> Let's try any faces. And edges. Control Z will collapse what you've done. Oh, I see. I see. All right, fair enough. We'll leave it its bottom edge. Grand. S scales. You don't have to scale out and in in proportion. You can also scale out of proportion using these tabs down here. So this little one with a box is your scale option. Click it. You'll have blue, green and red. You can squash it flat with the red one or the green one there. Or you can make it longer with the blue. Squash it down. Lengthen out. I don't want this to be too complicated. But at the same time, I'm going to vertex select now because I don't want to select these faces. So... Instead of the face select, I'm going to use the vertex select. We're going to box around here. We're going to grab that G and move it up. The arrow one here will move. This one will scale 
this one rotates. We'll get it as perfect as we may. Grab it. Scale it. We'll do that final bit as a separate cap. Very important function to learn now. B, box round, great. The E key will now extrude that shape. I know, crazy, right? What a word, extrude. E will extend our mesh object down. E will extend our mesh object down. Let's scale that slightly because the neck is getting thinner. We'll E and we'll scale our object down, making the neck thinner again slightly. And we'll E scale our object down that is pretty good isn't it so we've all got already got the makings of our curved handle still not happy we want this line here to be perfectly vertical so what we need to do is move this mesh down a little bit further and extrude. And when we do, we make sure it's nice and lined up. Good. Now that's perfect. Excellent. Use your eyes. Don't always trust your reference image. To my mind and my eye, that is too fat. So I'm going to slim that down. No, we'll keep working to the policy. Okay. I'm going to rotate this with the R key. I want it to be straight up. If we're going to create an end piece for this weapon, it's going to want to line up with the rest of the mesh. So let's make sure we get this right. Let's box around, go back to our reference image, grab it, let's see where this thing really starts going. Okay, just about there. And we'll scale that up slightly, just slightly. Yes. And then what we'll do is we'll extrude and push S to immediately scale that extrusion up. And we'll create a little lip here just slightly out there we'll grab that and move it down we'll extrude good and again we've got some tapering so we'll scale and we'll extrude oh, scale that extrusion out again move that extrusion down and then we'll extrude now the fine, mm, we'll do it in two stages. Scale that up. Grab it. Make sure all the items you want to extrude again with E. Scale it up. Yes, 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 yes. This will do us very nicely indeed. Okay, we're doing all right. I'm going to make this thinner. And I like how fat it's become. Now the downside with scaling sideways on an object that sort of slopes up like this is you're going to mess with your angles as soon as you start adjusting your width sideways. Um, again, <coughs> you're modding, you know, you're making an object. This is your baby. You know, whatever you want to do, whatever you think is the right way to go about it is. Let other people judge um, your methodology or your success later on once the mod's done. I'm going to extrude this up just slightly before we create our cap for the blade. Now the blade itself, it seems to my eye, as I said, to be a three-tiered object. We're going to want to place our cap on the end here and we're definitely going to want 
um, a bisected sphere to create that dome shape there. So how are we going to do it? All right. We'll go back into object mode. Arrows are safe. These here, you can really mess with your objects. So try and keep an arrow mode if you can. It's, it's the most commonly used mode. All right. We'll add in object mode. A mesh and we'll make it a cube and we'll scale it down remember we don't have to scale smaller bigger we can also scale thinner not quite as wide Great job. Now I reckon that is a good width for the blade overall. About half the width of a horse chopper. Yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe just a little bit wider in the middle. Grand. Now extruding. Um, oh, here's a really useful function of your background image. You can put it in front. You can put it at the back. If it's the front or at the back, you can change the opacity of that background image. So it's either completely covering what you're looking at, or it's completely dissipate. You might say, oh, which, which is the setting to keep it on? Well, you know, whatever you like. <laughs> whatever whatever's easiest for you, this is your tool. This is your blender. This is your fun time. So, um, by all means, do it whatever way you like. Me, I'm going to scale this. So that it's exactly right. So far as the base is concerned. Now we see the top here has grown significantly wider. Well, I don't want to scale the whole object this time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select vertices in edit mode. One, two, three, four. And remember, when you're in perspective view, you can start to get a little bit tunnel vision with what you're looking at. Remember to often check around your full 3D image and see what it is you're doing, see what's lining up. Sometimes you can be zoomed in too far. Now we'll select the whole top section and extrude again. At each extrusion, I'm going to adjust the width. Remember to tap click before you box round, otherwise anything that you have selected before will be retained. Now the beauty of these coordinate systems is I know from this perspective I'm I really am only operating in two dimensions here and I know that if the dimensions are right that this blade is just going to go straight up just like I want it to Now I had planned to have some wonderful music um, playing throughout this. If I can find a gap where there's nothing to say and I can give you a chance to listen to some quality Conan music while I do this, uh, I will do that. But um, I'm probably just going to be talking 
like a moron throughout this process while I concentrate. It may well come to the case that I have done this wrong and I'm not going to be able to finish the item on my own terms. But we will have to see. I'm going to start pulling these closer and closer together because we need the definition for the tip. And we're going to lose a lot of fidelity if we don't get it right. The problem with low resolution res um, reference images like this is that often you'll have a choice three, four pixels wide of what's going on and you'll have to decide what it is you want to achieve from a specific situation. And sometimes getting the perfect replica just isn't possible. And sometimes modding is about recognizing what's possible and what isn't then you don't waste time doing things that are just impossible that you never could have achieved so defining those strengths um, grab that oh, extrude grab box grab Too close, too close, too close, better. Grand, getting there. So we'll extrude again, grab, move across. Both of these need to come in now. So let's scale that inwards, grab, move, box, grab, move. Box, select, extrude. I'm just going to go for broke now. Scan down. Now you may have noticed because I've been scaling in three dimensions and not two that these are actually a lot sharper and smaller than the rest of the ones that I've laid along the blade length. But that's looking in all sorts of good shape, that is. Let's select this outer edge of the blade. You can do it one pixel at a time. You can box round. You can do whatever you like. This is your workspace, your workflow, and nobody is judging you. I will extrude that whole lot now. Oh, it's playing, playing silly buggers with me. wonder why that is. Let's try one more time. Yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. Yes. Oh my god, I love this program. Um, <laughs> hopefully I'll get a chance to tell you I hate it by the end. But um, Control-Z, if you ever screw anything up, box round, grab. And let's find that leading edge, shall we? As you can see, there are artifacts above. There are artifacts below. I am going to base the shape of the blade on the center line between the two and call the rest by eye. Box, grab. <laughs> oh, this would be a great time for some music, wouldn't it? Box, grab.
never be ashamed of going back and redoing anything you want to touch up. Blender is not a race. Mod creation is about patience. The more you take your time, the faster you will work because the fewer mistakes you will make. Mm. Not opaque enough. I really can't see what's going on. So I will increase how opaque it is. I'm cocking my head diagonally here to see if I can figure out what What needs to happen here next? Okay, let's grab this and extrude it right out. Grab, extend. Grab, extend. I don't even know if we need to do this. Give me some more. Give me some more. Remember, you're looking to get that sense of the shape. Nobody's eye needs to be defined, you know, to be completely convinced, but enough that the eye takes the shape and grants the belief that you are indeed looking at something um, from Conan the Barbarian. Grab. Mm, I'm wondering what to do next. We can extrude two surfaces. We can extrude one. We can extrude faces into each other. So when we come to a little knock like this, we can do several things. And at the beautiful stage of not having a UV map, you don't need to panic in any way. E extrudes. Con alt M at last. Select, select, Alt M at last. We'll connect and merge those two vertices together. If we select all of the sides of a specific face and push F, we are going to bang a face in there. Now, it's not the automatic way. It's not the easy way I've done it here, but it is the way I do do it. And, um, you know, it will never not work. That's how it's done. I'm going to extend this now to the very tip. No, I'm not. I want a little bit more curvature than this can possibly grant on the tip. That's where the tip is. How do I know that? Because this is my mod. And it does what I tell it to. I'm going about this the wrong way. I'm panicking because I really want to define the shape of the end of that blade perfectly. But it's no matter. Let's extrude and let the blade meet at the final end here. If you accidentally select one, just select it again and I'll uh, deselect whatever it is that you're clicking on. All right. Good 
job. I'm going to pop her in edit mode now quickly. And we are going to create the blade. This will be our leading edge. Nice and sharp. We don't want to go crazy with sharp. We don't want to damage any textures. And no one's going to notice how sharp it actually is in the game. That You can only zoom in so far. Nobody's going to run their thumb along the blade to check how sharp it is either. Excuse me. Mm. All right. Our blade is coming along. We're going to sharpen this edge as well, but let's figure out. Make sure the edge is along where we need it to be. But my goodness me, that couldn't have been more perfect if we placed it ourselves, could it? getting sloppy this isn't good enough sorry if it sounds like I'm a little bit quiet it's just half past three in the morning here now and um, there's someone sleeping in the room next to me hopefully we'll have this vid done by 7 a.m. Eh? <laughs> we won't but uh, hopefully we'll have finished the sword and recording by then anyway. So far as a lot of painstaking work goes, you really can't beat modelling. If you're thinking this seems a little long-winded, go and take a shower. You're a modder now. This is what you do. All right, let's link these two bad boys together. Alt M at last. Select this one first. Select this one second. And then the first one at last will move to the second. You can do it the other way around if you like, but for some reason I've always done it that way. That man's head has become annoying. Right click the body, armature, body mail here. I icon, he's invisible. He hasn't disappeared, just invisible. You can always bring him back. So you don't have to delete objects. Sometimes you can just get them out of your view site. That blade is looking fairly true. I just want to work the point in as a separate element. But let's go crazy and make some faces here. See how they naturally form into triangles. Very good indeed. We'll go for a straight point. So we'll extrude it. Mm. We'll extrude out from here. We'll extrude out from here. This one will connect to that one. Alt M at last. Alt M at last. And then we'll form our faces along this curve. Oh, 
nothing to connect this vertices to um, sorry nothing to connect this edge to um, what we do then is we subdivide so I will W subdivide and I do it twice and again for the other side W subdivide and again subdivide now you can see the little dots have appeared along here that means we, we've created vertices along this edge and that will give us something to get hold of as we proceed in creating faces along the edge Again, no doubt out there some smarty pants waiting to make a comment in the YouTube section about this isn't how you do it. Who cares, right? Is he making an epic Valeria sword and showing the world how to do it? No. We are. We're doing this together. And once we've learned these skills of using these reference pictures, what sword can you not make, my friend? Hmm? Grand. That is absolutely perfect. Let's draw all of these together into a, a point as well. Ooh. Very sharp, very sharp indeed. Let's do the rear edge blade now. You know, <laughs> that horse chopper is starting to annoy me. It's named static object up here, but if you right click, you'll notice that whatever you've clicked on selected white here, it makes it a lot easier to, um, to disappear something. So I can go all the way along here doing it individually, or I can go to the side here and box round, make it that little bit quicker. There are edge loop selects as well with the alt right click, but sometimes it works for me and sometimes it doesn't. And I find out I just wind up wasting loads of time trying to do it cleverly when you can just do it just as quick manually by hand. And why are we scared of doing it manually by hand? Generally because we've grown used to being lazy playing computer games. But now we're modding, we can do it pixel by pixel and make other people's games better. Notice as well how I changed my view, but the reference for these points doesn't change. Oh, what on earth is that? We have an artifact friends we've managed to move an object away from itself that shouldn't be possible you know that woman's body's really starting to get in my way let's make that invisible <laughs> great For some reason, these vertices are not joined to each other. See, I've selected half a vertex there, and these yellow lines have gone. But these black ones haven't been selected. Again, mm, well, again, it doesn't matter. So long as you select all those vertices, and they are still in exactly the same coordinate locations, it doesn't matter that they're not joined. They are joined, if you see what I mean. So you can separate them out or bring them back together again. Um, what are you doing, darling?
and this will still work. <laughs> yep. There are different view modes, there are different shading modes that all give you different information about what's going on. My favorite mode by far is solid and textured. But there is wireframe. I hate wireframe. <laughs> it makes me feel like my head is going to pop. So I remain in wireframe only as long as I need to and only when needed to reach inside objects, change internals, etc. So I'm going to pop it back into solid mode and have a little look at this. We have many imperfections creeping here. And this, can you see those? We can, these are normal map issues. And we're just about to correct them. Now, normals are not faces, and they're not vertices, and they're not edges. They are the way the face is pointing. Normal is towards the outside. We want the normals on the outside, and we want the internals, the not normals, pointing inwards. If there are in incongruities, um, you're going to struggle. Um, when you're making a mesh from scratch like I am now, occasionally Blender gets into a confusion at, at certain points as to what inside is and what outside is. Um, that's simply because it doesn't know what you're trying to make. Um, it's not doing it to, to mess you up. So it doesn't hurt to go through as you go and check on your normals. The N key opens up the properties and you will need to be in edit mode so that you can select individual vertices here. Um, but the normals options here can be done by face, edge, or vertex. Now you'll notice that some of our normals don't look normal. <laughs> that one there, for instance. Trying to be difficult. These long blue lines indicate that the normal is pointing outwards. Uh, if it's a small dot like that, it's, it's pointing inwards. Now, how do I change the direction of this face? Well, first, let's go into face select mode. Click on that dot there. And now it's either control or all N. I'm going to try control N to start with. Great. So it's control N to reverse any normal you think. Oh, hang on. That's not a normal. Control N. That's not a normal. Control N. That's not a normal. Control N. Now, if you're not careful, It'll render properly here in Blender, and then by the time you've got it into the game, it's starting to look blinking weird. Um, you may or may not know why those graphical glitches are occurring. Now it's just a little bit of care of duty here. What we want to do is get it nice and level and holding together as an object with no strangeness apparent about it. Sometimes you just got to edge a little bit here and a little bit there. Don't obsess over your reference image. Obsess over the object you are creating over the top of it. There really isn't enough definition on this tip. But just enough give us a good idea of what we're doing. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Width-wise, though, we're not happy up here at the end yet. We want this to be much more tapered than it is. So what we're going to do, let's go outside the blade, scale it, and only to the internals.
Let's make the whole leading edge just a little thinner. As I said, I don't have a front shot. Don't know how wide the blade really is. But, you know, I came to that conclusion it really doesn't matter. And um, what with it being my mod and everything, <laughs> kind of what I say goes, you know. And so it will be for your mod too. Now these lines, are the, the diagonal or not... Um, at this point it doesn't matter, we haven't made the UV map yet. It's once we've made the UV map and overlaid it, if we start making changes then, we're going to mess up the textures that we overlay. But as long as we get this bit right, we're all good. Now, is that not as close as it gets to being the perfect shape? Remember, Goldilocks. We can strive for perfection, you know, we really can. But remember, sometimes it's just going to be too hot, too cold, close, but not no cigar. You could sit there for days and days and days and go through every pixel along this blade, inch by inch, you know, to get it absolutely perfect. And that quality will show. But for me, in terms of more creation, I want to get it out there. I want people to enjoy it. And when they do, I want it to look exactly like their eye expects it to. So we've done the blade. Now we're going to do a little bit of pommel work. I wanted to create a sphere and split it in half and turn it into two halves of this leering head here. Uh, and also to create the pommel section here. It looks as though it's raised along here and rounded out along. It won't be quite such a sharp edge as the blade though, I don't imagine. I'm going to make this fully opaque and have a good look at it. Hmm... So our bladed edge tapers here. Yes. We'll simply extend the blade in one piece and we'll link that into the pommel. So what do we do? We select that bottom edge and the vertices on it. When you're extruding, it's best to have it lined up, but again, not necessary. Hey, mon cher, you are now in my second tutorial video. Ah, the trials of success. But I need to get this video finished. And I'm live. <laughs> I want to go to bed before 7, 8. We share all success. Right, sorry about that gang. Um, just got quickly interrupted there. Uh, we're going to now extrude this 
down, and I'm going to scale that out. Width-wise, we won't worry about it just yet. Scale that width-wise, yay. And we'll keep these bad boys in line as well. Good job. Hmm, I'm not quite sure how best to go. Well, let's move a little bit. Let's have a little think. All right. What we'll do is we'll carry the shape on through down to the base and then make it more complicated. Right now there will be several modders rolling their eyes towards heaven going, Mops, why didn't you do it this way? And uh, <laughs> I'm probably going to have to agree with them at some point. Um, remember you can always add new objects in, um, craft them to your own satisfaction. Um, but I do not believe that this is going to be a leading edge, so... If you can match your um, match your lines up both sides of your object, it doesn't need to be very wide, but it does need some width. Yes. Mon ami, we are a team. You're gonna love this vid. <laughs> yeah, I like the co star. Oh, blood dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that sword is smashing it. No doubt about it. Right, good, good, good. Sorry about that gang again. Um, you know how it is. I like this width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this lead surface here, extrude, 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 and round, and down, and back again. Perfect. This leading edge. Box round. Grab. Oh. Extrude. Beg your pardon. Again, are we aiming for perfection? No. We want it really, really, really good. But perfection... It's teams of a hundred professionals working for years at a time on budgets of millions of quid. They're not desperate, starving, broke people um, who haven't got any food to eat at the end of the month. 
which is me. It's not fair to expect perfection of yourself or of anybody else in that position. You know? It's not achievable. So always with your modding if you can. Aim for what's achievable. Now I realise these lines on this side of the picture are completely different from these. So I'm going to bear that in mind when I extrude. I want my blade to be essentially symmetrical. There is a mirror function. I know there is. Someone tried to explain it to me. Um, but I, I just couldn't wrap my head around it at the time. And not doing it has kind of stuck as policy now. Guess he forgot to extrude one of the edges here. Brilliant. We'll go again. Denying frustration, angst and anger. We will lay each line out here. And remember doing this by hand is it's you're creating an object you completely understand here, you know? You're not using some super pro super model with nine hundred and forty thousand vertices. There's uh, there's 284 in this object, and I've made every last one of them. So I won't struggle with the UV maps making this object because I know exactly what I've done here. It's it's mine, you know. Okay, we've got two edges there. That's excellent. Now we'll do the outer. And of course, when I started this. Um, mod tutorial series and when I started modding the goal was always to bring these skills to a or hopefully you know figure out these skills are possible and to bring those skills out to a broader audience and let you guys know that it's quite possible to create truly epic looking stuff that's exactly like the stuff in the movies And now let's make our faces. Face. Let's face the music and dance. Just a little joke there, you know, modest joke. See that normal creeping in? Cheeky, cheeky. Don't worry, we'll correct them before we publish the object. It's not Blender's fault and it's not my fault. Let's blame it on... Um, the impassioned World War II speeches of Winston Churchill, shall we? Why not? Well, because he's one of the forerunning leaders and a much beloved character from history. Yeah, that's a good reason not to do it. <laughs> and as you can see, this work will most likely be done automatically by a, some auto feature of some program somewhere somehow but um, that's not how I'm doing it because I don't know how but the job still needs to get done and uh, hopefully by the time I'm finished not only will this be an excellent job and a perfect complement to Conan's sword but also you'll have that skill base set in place that you need to start achieving this for yourself i think one of the main things is that people haven't gotten this haven't gotten this reference picture thing down yet you know and if they had their blades would look identical to the ones <laughs> that they're copying you know and and hopefully from now on um they all will be which would be great And I have been waiting for a few days now. Um, I was attacked in my house last night, and I was supposed to get these, uh, get this mod video up then. But uh, I got punched in the face. I had blood all over me. It was a, 
it was a nightmare and uh, I, I, I just couldn't build the strength to talk to you guys for hours on end um, and concentrate so unfortunately part two was delayed for a day um, and it was delayed for a lot of the rest of today as well because I've attracted a couple of new patrons today I've been talking to them um, and I really can't finish Valeria mod um, until this sword is complete I can't c complete Conan and if I can't complete Conan and I can't start improving Obi-Wan and if I don't start improving Obi-Wan then we won't be ready for May the 4th and if you miss May the 4th what kind of a mod studio are we building Star Wars Ultimate if we miss Star Wars Day well we're no kind of mod studio are we so let's make sure we've got Obi-Wan sorted by then five days should be fine but Valeria must be done and this mod video I owe it to a friend who wanted me to explain UV maps sorry this has turned into a bit of a modeling tutorial as well but um I'm not that sorry because I know how many people will benefit from this skill set as I said probably not the fastest most professional way to do this but so long as you're comfortable with what you're doing that's the main thing if I was a genius I'd already be a highly paid computer programmer I'm not a genius I'm a moron um, which is why I get to this stage in my life with so little money so little choice so little hope and why I do so much of my work for free um, I know a lot of you modders out there as well starting exactly the same boat I did not knowing what it is that you don't know or how to figure it out and a lot of the tutorials out there uh, oh well what can I say they're all really 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 good but the blender tutorials they don't know what you're trying to achieve here and there are precious few videos about Kenshi Blender oh yes 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 juicy your own item when you decide to do a tutorial item perhaps you'll choose something a little bit simpler than this curved nightmare that I've selected and uh, I know I certainly will <laughs> um, I was so sure when I selected this blade that I'd be able to do it in one hit and record it for you uh, the old conceit of modders um, I was absolutely positive that it wouldn't present any difficulties that I wouldn't be able to overcome live um, in front of you guys, you know, just to prove that it's not a setup, it's not Blue Peter, we're, uh, we're really doing this. I just want to subdivide here, and I want to subdivide this one too. I've done that separately so we don't subdivide the top bits here. So the subdivide is just to create an extra vertex marker there and I reckon that's close enough to the bone that it's a good guide for what we want to achieve. So let's pop these, click, shift click, alt, m, at last, click, shift click, alt, m, at last, grand. Let me just check my reference image again. Yeah, no. That's a really good line. Yeah, good enough. Good enough. Okay, we tidy bits in a moment. I just want to get my sphere ready. So, in object mode, you can add any object that you like. We're going to want to add a mesh, and it's going to want to be a UV sphere. Different meshes will perform different functions for you, for different reasons. Squares are really good, as you can see, for laying out against the straight edges there. 
circles as you can see had their own uses not that way they don't and you can overlay them just like you've overlaid everything else you can scale them just like you've scaled everything else until it lines up perfectly with your image shot or as close as you can get it one gets you straight on three the side seven top down too wide isn't it so we scale it down easy peasy great now what I'm gonna do happy with the shape happy with the size but this bottom half doesn't need to be there so we'll select with the B key we'll delete those vertices and we'll have what we need we'll select this here we'll box around here and we'll extrude that straight down one two and I'm not going to stray into the um, into the red axis here the X axis because I'm in orthographic view it only lets me do Z up and down Y front to back now if I want a couple of little rings it doesn't have to put them in here you're giving yourself flexibility choice great absolutely great I'll make this one just slightly smaller just to give us an in great now because this is a different object we have to select between them in object mode we can join these objects together later on to form a complete object we want to make sure all of our UV map naming conventions are all ready and that we're not going to damage anything when we pass them together so we'll align the UV maps first and then um, then we'll join the object together in the case of a simple object like this with just a few elements it's um, not so important but as you get to more and more complicated objects I could show you some real messes I've created out of UV maps that are just a, 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 a splat of confused information all across um, the UV image um, viewer. Crikey, I'm really feeling the fact it's four in the morning. Ha ha, I need to have a little breath. Give me a second, folks. I'll grab a, uh, grab a cigarette. Mm. Don't smoke yourself, it's bad for you. Definitely don't smoke butt rollies like I do. It's a shame, shameful situation to be in such a desperate bide. And if you do, don't tell everyone online about it. They'll think you don't have any shame. What am I doing now, folks? That's right, sorting the normals out. Just make sure they're all the right way around. With a low poly object that you yourself have created, it will be very easy to spot what's going on. There are a lot that are not happy here. You don't have to do it one at a time. You always miss one, friends. Don't beat yourself up. Don't destroy your keyboard. Just accept the mistakes will be made and it'll be you will be the one that's making them because you're a modder now. You'll have to take responsibility for your mistakes and your errors in time and pain. Because if I sit here and I make a load of nonsense in front of you for two or three hours and then it turns out I can't even make it into a sword 
um, there'll be a reason. And finding those reasons is part of being a modder. Once you figure them out, oh, the gold happens. So I'm filling in the faces here that weren't filled in before. Hmm. I wonder if I'm even happy extending that line. I really am. Let's subdivide these. W, subdivide. Click, click, W, subdivide. And that side's nothing like this side, is it? The reason I'm surprised is because I was sure I subdivided this line with the plan of making this line up perfectly. I may well have. Alt M at last. Alt M at last. Yeah, still a pretty good line. And it should meet exactly in the middle and be mirrored on this side by that vertex just there. So these are connected and so are those over there. They should be in exactly the same place and nice and symmetrical. Sadly, we've got to do all of the faces of the other side and I could have cheaped this. But um, it's a good excuse to put some more music on, isn't it, friends? I may talk while the music is on, but I'm sure you'll be able to hear me over the top because I'm going to carefully edit the sound levels when I make the video face and you'll find that as a modder your skill sets constantly expanding to fill the things you don't know how to do perfectly natural and beautiful process it is as well and what is our goal tonight just the one thing let's get Valor Valeria's sword made and UV mapped And if anybody knows a way to put all these faces in automatically without doing it by hand, yay you, you know what I mean? You are, you are the mod god. And us mortals must do it with patience. One little success at a time. But an accurate mesh is essential. And if you're not using Blender, I can't imagine how it is you're creating accurate meshes because it's such a great program. I know there are professional programs out there, but I've never used them because I'm not a professional. Just a modder with some skill and a lot of care, attention and respect for the community. Mm, we're missing a face we need here. Let's subdivide. has gone wrong here why are those crossing over there <laughs> that's not supposed to happen please tell me that's not happening on the other side and no such trouble how did this even happen what am I going to do about it Right, I'm going to panic and delete that. Yep, that definitely wasn't what I wanted. Let's just delete the face. What happens if I switch them over? Ah, flipperoo. 
Oh my goodness. How does this even happen to an honest man? Thank God the blade still looks okay. Let's think these two to, mm, let's get these two a little bit closer in. This is looking like it's starting, it's going to turn into one of those nightmare models that I can't control. Got a fix. We'll just make a face over the top. It's not the ideal fix, I know, I know it's not, I know it's not. Can it be that I have inverted this entire outer edge without even noticing I have done it? Quite possible. And yes, it has been done. Your leader, the moron, has somehow managed to really mess the outer edge of this blade up. Let's fix this. I don't know how. <laughs> I've never done this before in my life. Let's uh, let's hope that this uh, this won't scupper what is otherwise an excellent project. What have I done, man? These two are good, see? This is where the, f the screw up starts happening. So all we've done is gone a little bit over eager on sharpening that blade and it never really needed to be that tight anyway. And we'll select the rest and now we know what we're doing is going to correct our problem. We'll spread the solution along the edge. Alright. Oh, that's definitely the right way around now. By deleting these, we should be able to repair the damage that's been done. So there you go, little brain fart, just to prove that I am actually a modder. <laughs> Although hopefully the broken cigarette smear voice has already uh, already convinced you of that. Actress, I am not. Um, all right, and we're just going to face this up like we have been before. Selecting three and face it. You can do it by fours. You can do it by fives. But you will get into trouble when you edit your mesh. Triangles are nice in that it's all very interconnected. You're not going to wind up with any flexy faces that have more um, than one aspect to them. And that is going to be very good for eliminating graphical glitches from your items. If you can, triangles. But squares, as long as you know they're not going anywhere, but in and out and up and down, squares will work too. I 
and for yourself as well as you're going through this tutorial video you may well be thinking you know pounding the screen mops why aren't you doing this mops why aren't you doing that and um i don't know <laughs> i don't know what you're worried about because uh you're not here and um i'm just here making this this mod tutorial but whatever you're thinking that you can do better do it do it you know this will be your blend when it comes your turn um, to making an epic sword that everybody's going to want to download um, and sharing the skills for other people. So, you know, it'll be your own way. And that's what these mod tutorials are all about. Give you the artistic freedom and self-belief to create. Right, I've decided that these are frivolous and we don't need them. Good. And it's funny, you know, when you're a modder and you decide something's frivolous and you don't need them. Blam, they're gone. Your world, this is the beauty of modding. And even though it can be frustrating and sometimes you have to go one pixel at a time. Or you make mistakes that you can't correct and you have to throw whole blends away. Or you howl at the moon because you've spent 160 hours on something and somebody's told you it's crap. But these frustrations I feel are more than offset by the fact that you get complete artistic carte blanche on what you are doing and it's not that there's no competition out there in Kenshi there's a lot of extremely talented modders out there um, it's not a competition but that's no reason you can't make the best mods in the world yourself and share those mods with others and uh, you know make a bit of money have a lot of fun and turn Kenshi into exactly what you want it to be um, although it's not always possible and that you have to be Goldilocks as a modder and understand that some things just aren't possible and that sometimes the victory is in realizing that as quickly as possible or finding a workaround and a solution can't happen until you remember what it was I was just talking about but I am concentrating on making a mesh at the same time as I'm talking and if I lose my way at quarter past four in the morning I reckon there's a whole bunch of you out there more than willing to forgive me and for the rest of you well why so harsh <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, we're going to link these final little bits in and we're going to be looking like we're in really good shape. But of course, this is modding. Looking like you're really in good shape and actually being in good shape are two separate things. I hadn't planned for this element to take quite as long as it has, but I thought it was going to be a simple bit and it turned into a quite a complicated one. See how we've normalised the uh, left hand side here and this side we haven't done our normals yet, so let's do that. Face select. Grab those ones that look abnormal. Control N. I zoom in, I zoom out, I look what's going on. Don't tunnel vision one view. The damage you can do is just untold. And you think everything's fine and you've made the perfect object. And then you look at it from the side, you oh dear. <laughs> the whole thing's upside down. But after you've been at it for a while, you know, hashed through it, made your mistakes over and over again you will start to stop making them you know you'll you'll know your stuff 
or if a mistake happens you've got the right attitude towards it you know don't panic don't give up just suck it up curse at the computer and on you go lovely jubbly all right i can't i can't i can't make it any better than that except for the one normal you always miss always one grand well somebody stopped me <laughs> okay great so now we've got our our hilt that lines up with the mesh we've got our handle that sort of lines up with the mesh we've got this um semi-circular piece here that we're going to slot in and slide in as well it's starting to look like exactly what we want isn't it we do not like the shape of this handle it somehow seems too thick you see what i mean in this picture it's clearly quite a slender handle but when you look at the object itself just a bit too chunky this is the problem with not having a side mesh I think the handle is thinner and it is wide that's what's messing us up so as you can see all the bits are separate if we select them individually in object mode and we push tab we'll see this image overlay here but we it, it won't project over there into the uv map so what we're going to do is we're going to push a double tap a a a and that will select our whole object here and that will show us the uv information and you'll notice there isn't any because we haven't uv mapped this object yet um, for that reason, it is exactly at this point and stage of play, a piece of Lego. We can't texture it. Which is why UV maps are so important, Automoti. Um, with UV maps in place, we can look right here in the render at what we need it's too wide and so I will make it thinner But you'll find a lot of your own work in Kenshi is very like this. I've spotted something. I don't like it. Blam. Fix it. Mm. S is your scale key. I really don't think people are going to be too bothered about the quality of this hilt, but it doesn't hurt to give them a little something extra, does it? You know, what are we here for? We're here to make people treats, make their lives better. So let's make it just a little extra effort here on the pommel. We'll add another sphere. S scales it straight down, grab it with the G key, and we'll move it into the pommel there. And you'll think, oh, it doesn't quite line up, but remember, I'm a modder, I will line it up. All that bit of cloth is clipping through the, uh, the arm. Well then, you know, unclip it. You know, oh, cloth looks like it bends more than that when it's pressed against the surface. Well, you know, bend it. <laughs> you are the guy that's going to make, or gal, that's going to make the difference um, to your own game. So do whatever you like to make it better. It's only a good idea. 
pretty good, no? Again, you're not stuck with symmetry either. You can just give a little tweak here and a little tweak there to add a little character. Oh, I've got a sphere inside here I want to delete. How do I select it without selecting the outside? Well, <coughs> there are many ways. We can L click on the bit we can see on the outside there. And then we can shift B to deselect the bit we don't want. And then we can control I and that will invert the selection. But that didn't work because as you can see, the circle thinks it's part of the pommel. But that's fine because we can always control Z if we make a mistake. Instead, I'm going to shift B, the bottom section that I want to keep, and I'm going to delete the top section. Grand. Okay, perfect. It doesn't get much better than that for a, a sturdy, solid replica of a reference model. The only thing I'm not really happy with is this handle. I think my obsession with making it go straight up has cost me in terms of shape. And my belief that the handle must, in fact, be thinner than I'm looking at here on the reference shot um, may be counterproductive. We can embellish that further, but I don't think we're going to need to. So, we've created the blade. Um, we've created the... We've used the reference shots to give us exactly what we want. Thin, slicing, valerian perfection, sharpened to a deadly tip. The normals you see can be very useful for showing you your angle deflection on any given element. See that I wasn't in orthographic view there, so there's a chance I've dragged that blade out of symmetry. Not a whisk on risk I'm willing to take. Always looking, always learning. You may think, well, Mops, you're going way outside of your purview in terms of your reference image here. But I don't care about the reference image, really. I care about this object. It's got to look right in its own right. And no reference image can make it look right. It's, it's, you've got to look at it. think something's out or it just doesn't look natural do what you can to correct it I'm 
reference image gone? Honestly, friends, sometimes I feel like I'm going mad. Fine, don't need a reference image. Didn't need you anyway. I've now combined the elements of the mesh. We do not need to worry too much, I don't think. Um, I'm going to take artistic license here. No, I'm not too scared. <clears throat> okay. Do our UVs, gang, and see how this comes together. Too opaque for me to see it. How about that? Too translucent, should I say? Okay, we made these for a reason. Now, when you want to extract your object and UV map it, there are several options. You can do it all together. You can do it in separate bits. Um, for my part, I like to have it mostly mapped, if I can, in one hit separate bits if necessary but as that blade on the uv map over there uh is going to be it's an exact copy of this reference image it's just spun round so so long as i've overlaid correctly over the reference image the uv map should be an easy peasy thing to do but we will see so now we're going to select u for uv unwrap and instead of unwrap smart UV and all that nonsense, we're going to project from view. Oh my goodness me, look at that. It looks just like the sword I'm about to lay it over, doesn't it? Now, uh, with the image viewer, a lot of the controls are identical to the 3D viewer. So you can grab, you can move around, you can scale, you can rotate. Um, if you push SY, you're going to scale up and down. If you push SX you're going to scale in the X um, side to side. Um, so Y and X are coordinates that you can also hit after the S key to maneuver an object either, you know, wider or higher and lower. Uh, so I'll, if I hit S now, I can scale this object. I'm not going to. Um, I want to make sure it's oriented properly. For off. What am I nattering for? Let's do it. R is going to rotate it. G is going to grab it. R is going to rotate it again. G is going to grab it. S is going to scale it. We're going to grab it again. We're going to scale it again. We're going to grab it again. We're going to scale it again. Oh my my. Just a tiny bit more. Rotate. Grab. Goldilocks. You don't want to go too far. You don't want to go too short. It doesn't need to be exact. Just good enough. You can maneuver any of these bits by boxing round and grabbing with the G key. That bit won't matter too much tail end i want to be ours custom jobby so we will go to not see through mode and let's face select mode Shall we even go crazy 
try it from the bottom exactly no because the handle is not quite straight and we're going to do better by eye you project from view well 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 what do you know let's scale that down let's rotate that around scale it down again grab it plonk it exactly where we want it great so now i have a uv map sword to a degree yeah it's rough edges so let's see what it looks like this new object that i have created is using the correct material but we are in the wrong mode so let's go out of texture <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could not have wished for that to come out better, could ya? Oh, my lord, live. Well done. Well done, everybody. So what are our issues here? A little bit of fading along the side there, yeah? Obviously, because we projected from the front, from the side... Um, these edge bits, they're going to be the glitchy ones, you know, right down, down the edge of the blade. Not so much a trouble because um, that edge is so thin, so slender. But even there, you can see we've traveled across the edge of our UV map here. Now, this need not be an issue, friends. No, no, because we can tidy this up. No problem in the UV editor itself. We can see where that line's going to cross, can't we? So all we're going to do, tip aside, I don't want to mess with it. Let's get this. Okay, let's normalize this. Yeah, let's make sure that these dots here on the edge. Again, with movements of this size, you are not going to distort the appearance of pixels along the blade. You just want to make sure that these pixels do not cross across that black line. One, two, buckle my shoe. Boxes, boxes. B, 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 B. If you can save yourself work, friends, do. You know, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to fall on your sword. You can grab more than one bit at the same time. And move them exactly where you want them. Any difficulty you have, you can just change it. Why? Because you are a modder and this is your mod. It does exactly what you want it to. And even if it doesn't, you don't have to tell anybody else. What do they know anyway? And if it turns out that it looks like the sword of my... The handle of my Valeria sword is ever so slightly wrong. Or the uh, the resolution of the blade wasn't up to snuff. Or um, I've forgotten to do a screenshot of the statistics of the blade when I popped it up online. Um, let them see what they like. This is our place and... We're using it to help other people enjoy their games more. I wonder if the person who's moaning at you has such a quality cause. I'm not happy about this at all. I'm going to move this right in. In fact, I'm going to look at this separately. Now remember in the game this is going to be tiny. <laughs> you could go crazy, you know. Have a one pixel and just um, obsess and obsess and obsess. But uh, the main thing is getting it right so that you're happy. If your UV maps are crossing borders you don't want them to, move them back, you know. Remember when you were young and colouring with colouring crayons and getting it all between the lines? This is like that, but with extra lives. <laughs> you can do, you know, you can move the lines even if you like. 
You don't even need to uh, necessarily... Because we're not changing the shape of the object, we're merely changing its reference to this two-dimensional object. That is a UV map, yeah? Once you start using reference shots and using them inside the main viewer to improve your accuracy, you will have taken that one additional step closer to being the professional you've always wanted to be. Okay, the handle's good, you know, but is it good enough? Hmm, I don't think it is. Now, this is a simple fix, yeah? That handle there, well, we'll edit the diff map. And because we've got GIMP open while we're working, because you've already got a diff map already sorted out, this edit will be a piece of pimp. We will ring round with the magic ring. We will control C, V, and we will move that in rectangle mode. Oh, it's not going to let me. It's easy. It's easy. Hmm. Threshold select. Perfect. Control C, V. Let's move that bad boy over. Good. This is the selection you've created. You can right click, floating selection over here, to a new layer. Fully, fully opaque? It doesn't look fully opaque to me. Oh well, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all, in fact. I'm going to erase the bits I don't need. Circular brush is better for diagonals. Tidy the edges up. doesn't need to be perfect we only really need two of these and then I'm going to maneuver this bad boy back into position over the handle I'm going to rotate this shift R it can be confusing sometimes when you hop over into blender uh, into GIMP from blender um, because all the controls are slightly different. Control C, Control V will give me another copy of that. Oops, reset. Grab it. R, for instance. <laughs> um, R is rotate in Blender. It's rectangle mode in GIMP. And Shift R is your rotate command. And the, <laughs> the overlays are such a similar grey that I often get confused as to which... Uh, which program I'm actually using. Uh, but they're easy mistakes to make and we won't need that as big as it actually is. So let's scale that down. And let's turn interpolation into none because we don't really want it to be fuzzied up. We'll reset and we'll do that again with no interpolation. No, 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 no. I've moved that big blue line and I don't even know why that's there. Mm, oh well. Maybe I'll moan at some patrons about it before I release my video, eh? Okay, still not perfect, but edited UV map. We are going to anchor those layers down now. We can't. Okay, why can't we do that? Because we have to merge down a layer that isn't temporary. And we're going to make sure that works too. Because I don't know what this blinking blue line is or how I drew it down. But it's bound to be something that screws us up later on. Let's uh, let's export this as. This will be Valeria Sword UV Map 2. 
and I figured out I've been misspelling Valeria, which is why I couldn't find my stuff earlier on. Perfect. We'll save it in JPG because it's a nice small file and we won't need the diff map until later. Why am I saving this as a JPG? I want a PNG, please. PNG is where I want to be. Great. Now we've got Blender. Open again. We're going to open... the changed UV map and bring it in as an image. Open image. Valeria UV map 2.png 449 kilobytes. Now we should be able to get a little bit more luck here. If I'm not happy with a wrap around on an object and a half I want half of that object selected, don't I? So what we're going to do here... Great! And we'll overlay it. So we'll unwrap. Dup. UV. Project from view. Grab it. Scale it. Grab it, rotate it, scale it, rotate it. See what we're doing here. See how good this is. You can so do this. A monkey like me can do this. You can do this. You know you can. the wrong button and I don't know what wrong button I've pressed or what it does <laughs> but we'll project that from view see if we get away with it again you know we're not looking for perfection. We don't need it to be perfection. We need it to be good enough for a discerning eye to consider it perfect. We are getting to that point, friends. This will look better in Kenshi than it does here. There's no question about that. Still not happy with that. Why am I still not happy with that? Well, I've forgotten to update my material so don't assume because I'm changing UV information over here and overlaying this new diff map that I've loaded in that it's representative of the object in the 3D viewer. You are going to need to go back to your materials and I generally just, if I'm changing materials, I don't mess around, delete the material and create another new one. Then it's new again, down to here, and Valeria Sword UV Map 2 will give us an accurate interpretation of what this handle is now doing. Still aghast at how not quite good enough that is. And that top edge is really good as well, isn't it, on the uh, old man face. It's, uh... <clears throat> okay, how many swords in Kenshi are better than that? Why am I still faffing around? Why am I not exporting it into the game, friends? Testing it, seeing, seeing what it can do. Am I being too much of a perfectionist? I may well be. I just need to know why this face looks so terrible. And it's because the UV map is spread out like so. So we'll uh, project from view. Scale it down. Grab it. Rotate it. Scale it down again. Scale it up a little. Scale it up a little, grab it over there. Rotate. I 
think it's the wrong way up personally. Let's try it that way around. Better. Much better. These two are relevant to each other, so it'll be easy to spot what this other line is doing and why it's so slender. And we'll grab that, we'll extend it out onto that other handle. And that should, to a degree, give us a perfectly well ordered looking handle. We don't like that bit at all. <laughs> Sorry guys, I forgot I was recording for a second then, and um, how much I hate doing this. UV maps are a mystery to me. Um, but, as you can see, knowing what we know now, we can achieve a lot knowing not much. wish that handle was just a little bit longer but I'm faffing around I am I'm messing about I'm gonna not make this scabbard I'm gonna export this and show you how to get it into the game without crashing the game first I'm gonna check my normals mm -hmm. make sure there are in fact vertices everywhere I think there are Give me just a little extra length, baby. Just a teeny little, just, just barely noticeable. If you're going to mess around after you've UV mapped your object, make sure you equalize as best you can, because you're going to stretch your pixels out, and they're not going to look quite as happy. But little edits, not so bad, not a problem. Righty ho, gang. Horse Chopper has his origin set in the right place. We want to set the origin for our sabre in the right place as well. So let's get the Horse Chopper exactly into the middle of the coordinate system. Here is the location of the transform. If you want something to be in the middle, this will read zero, zero, zero. Yeah. Um, there are other ways to do it. Let's try zero, zero, zero for now. Great. There it is. Bang in the middle. Or grab G, move. I can shift S cursor to center shift s again selection to cursor blam in the middle um that's the origin point of that object as well you will notice that the origin point of my saber is quite a lot offset from the center of it 
it's going to want its origin right in the middle of the handle and it's going to want the handle to be roughly the same place as that horse chopper is now it may wind up that this blade I've made is too small or too big or it's not being held in the right place and uh, it's my fault uh, or uh, it may well be that this is perfect in, on, on, on first go which would be great you know but um, if it is going to work first time it's going to want its origin in the right place now we know this one's origin is in the right place and it's in the center so we're going to move the cursor to it cursor to selected or center it's the same place right now then we'll select the blade and we're going to push shift control alt c and we're going to set origin to 3d cursor now our new blade has its origin set absolutely perfect now, if I had a patron on right now, I'd ask them if I should make the scabbard too. I'm not sure how long I've been recording for. How long have I been recording for? Will it tell me? No. I'll just keep on, friends. We are 10 to 5 in the morning now, and we have completed the sword. The first of the early morning traffic has travelled by, so I'm going to do the scabbard later and explain to you why. All these extra elements have found their way into the Yui. But I think with the sword complete, let's move on to phase two and get this bad boy into the game. The origin is correct. It's facing the correct direction. Um, now we are going to be in object mode and have it selected. We're going to go to file. Because during my first tutorial, you downloaded the Kenshi Ogre Mesh Export Import plugin, um, you'll be able to click that. Now... Export your tangents and export your binormals. I don't even know what those two things are, but I know you have to export them. Um, transform is the location data of the object. We've moved it into the middle. We've reapplied the origin. Uh, if we don't click apply transform, it won't care that you've done that. And you'll be back to square one with a, a, an object that doesn't work. Apply modifiers. Um, if you've used any modifiers, usually, generally, you'll be using Boolean transfers to link objects together and split them apart. Haven't shown you how to do that in this um, tutorial, um, but you'll definitely want to consider that. Um, that's apply transform, apply modifiers, export tangents, export binormals, and you are good to go. You won't need skeleton, but if you do export um, a race, do consider exporting a skeleton um, or a piece of armor that has arms export the skeleton uh, because when you reload it into blender having taken it out of blender if there's no skeleton there will be no armature rig um, and it is it is hell trying to get an unarmatured mesh to maneuver itself it really is it really is a hell so if you've got an armature meshed object um, and you're planning to use it again or even if you're not export the skeleton you'll thank me later you might just thank me once or maybe a hundred times but you'll thank me okay great now we want to save it to a specific folder remember in the original tutorial we created a mod folder. Not Witcher. Come on, Rachel. Are you a mod? Yes, you are. Good. So Valeria's sword is a mod folder. And we want to save our mesh directly into there. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Naming convention. Valeria's blade. Valeria blade. mesh and double check you're not a moron and these four are checked it's important yeah export oh 
What is that blue line even for? Who cares? We are going to make our diff map now. Now, the reason the diff map is different from the PNG uh, that we've used as reference, uh, it, it, it is exactly the same dimensions, but it will be layered mathematically. It will be a lot bigger, and it will have um, an encoded alpha channel. And it took me a while to figure this out. Props to OEEO for explaining this to me. My alien was bright blue before he figured out how to uh, explain this to me. So let me just check the um, properties of this layer now. 650 by 650. Let's make sure it really is. Yes, it really is good. Sorry, I'm still in blender mode, folks. Let's look at the alpha channel of this picture. Right click, add layer mask. Transfer layers alpha channel, add. Oh, nothing happened. But down here, you can see that alpha channel. If we right click on that and we show the layer mask, we can see it now and we can edit it. Even though it's the same picture, um, you will often find that You'll want to grayscale your own layer. So let's just quickly um, disable the layer mask and delete the layer mask and add another layer mask. And we'll grayscale copy the layer, transfer that across instead. You can wind up with... Voila. Now I know that some of this is just a little bit too bright, so I'm going to turn it down. Dark side... Dark side of the grey scale is a really good spot. Um, I haven't done the scabbard yet, but sight unseen, I know this is going to have to be less bright. So I select uh, image, layer, colours, brightness, contrast. Make sure my edit mode is engaged. It is, otherwise I'd have more options. Brightness down. much more reasonable okay very nice now we will stop showing the layer mask we will stop editing the layer mask and you'll notice now it's all gone misty and unless someone understands layer masks they'll load that in and they won't even know what's going on but you will know that if you load one of these files in from Kenshi with their encoded alpha channel it will occlude the image concentration and if you if you load it in in full gloss without any see-through like you can see here you will wind up with an extremely shiny object like gloss paint it really is an ugly object um, I'll show you for instance like when I didn't know all of this when I first started modding uh, I made some Star Trek The Next Generation uniforms and because I didn't really know what I was doing I, I wound up with this awful glossy finish on everything the trousers, the uniforms, the, the guns because I didn't know the, the Alpha Channel was there um, since we started using the Alpha Channel we've been able to create some much better effects no alpha channel organized on this picture here but by the end oh yes we know what we're doing that's thanks to oeo in one mod uh, learning that th those amazing tricks so you know it as well now you want a dark gray diff map if you want the surface to look anything like normal you want it to be about that dark gray but again goldilocks you're a modder pick I'm not saying that the one I use is the best. It probably isn't. I am an amateur, same as you are. Um, and we'll work together, if we can, to hopefully become better and make even better mods and mods and mods and maybe one day make games and change the world and make people smile on, on a professional basis. But for now, just know you want a coded, encoded alpha channel. It's called a layer mask in GIMP. And you want to 
save that right along with your PNG. When you export as, we're going to go once again. It's really difficult to navigate this, but we'll try. We're going to go to mods. Valeria's sword. And we're not going to save Valeria's sword UV map 2 this time. We're going to save Valeria's sword diff dot dds this is our diff map it will need and require a direct draw surface you are going to want to generate mit maps you might want to compress it you might um oh what have i done where is it where's it gone what have i done oh no 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 you might want to compress it because they're so big and yeah, if you've got a, um, a system that uses um, you've got a mod that's got a lot of different bits in it then you're going to want to keep your DDS files down as small as possible um, to be fair DTX DXT5 is what most people use I don't compress my DDS files at all I don't trust compression um, I've had so many mistakes over the years and to this day even though I've got it right so many times I'm never quite sure that I'm gonna get it right first time so it's a mistake I I can't make because I never compress my DDS's I just make sure there's as few of them as possible and I use them sparingly um, and if I can I, I fit as much onto one DDS as I possibly can but there we are we'll click save <laughs> I'm just doing Valeria on share. Okay. Sorry, I've had another Wanderer and Blood Dragon, a couple of my patrons checking on me, keeping me honest. God bless them. Okay. We've now exported the diff map. We've exported the mesh. Let's get into FCS and see if we can get this thing to render in game. We will need a normal map too. But I've got a normal map that just works perfectly, so I won't need I won't be needing to do that. You can use whatever normal map you like as long as it's the same dimensions um, as the sword we've just made and the diff maps that you're using. You can use whatever you like. Um, I would use a flat, straight flat blue screen uh, to prevent any madness from resulting out of your normal map. Me, I use any norms, so we've got Valeria's sword active. I'm going to have all these other mods active as well for this run, just so I can grab bits and bobs I need to make this happen as a reality. And let's go. Sorry, the fun bit's over, guys. We're just going to do a little bit of grunt work now and um, nail this item to the wall. Remember, in the first tutorial, we named our weapon Horse Chopper, Val Valeria Horse Chopper. Still there, waiting for us. But now we've got a mesh to put over it. Now you've got different options here. There will be three files that you save in the long run. Uh, you're going to want to save your Sabre. You're going to want to save your Sheath. And you will want to save your sheath and the saber inside it together. The bear sword with no sheath goes in here. The um, sword plus the sheath goes in here. But we don't have a sheath, do we? So let's just plop in a Valeria blade. Sheath? We don't got one yet. But we will, and when we do, 
we'll slam it in there. Do we need a sheath file or not? I don't know. I've never made a sword without a sheath file before. Let's delete it and see if it breaks the game. It might do. More than likely. <laughs> so now we've got Valeria's Blade Bear Sword. It's got Valeria's Blade Mesh. Um, so when it's on her hip, it'll be visible. And when she pulls it out, it'll be in her hand. Win. Length 18 sounds about right. Let's just have a little look inside Blender again. slightly longer than horse chopper isn't it i mean functionality blade wise but let's not fiddle with that anyway let's instead focus on making this a functional option we've got the mesh in there but it's still essentially a piece of lego uh with a uv map that's going to read vanilla kenshi files and have a little bit of a brain fart uh we don't want to do that so what we're going to do is we're going to line our own diff map up. Um, we're going to need a manufacturer. Um, I've been using Chrom for um, Conan's blade. But I think in this case we'll just create a copy. And we'll call it Juggernaut. Because he's the guy that has refused to become a patron of mine. And I'm making this mod tutorial for him. So um, hopefully he'll see this and it will convince him that uh, coming on board with us at the MIG factory is a good idea. Uh, shameless plug. Sorry, Jugs. Um, Juggernaut is a titan of sword creation hmm. here underneath the weapon manufacturer we store our diff map always replace with copies before you edit I'm going to keep MIGS any norm, but I can't read it from that blade file, not for the Valeria sword mod. I need to get MIGS any norm out of that blade, which is where I copied this blade to Fiberia from. So mods, that blade, MIGS any norm, right click, copy, mods, Valeria sword, right click paste select open now the root of valeria's sword is in my mod folder this mod will not be dependent on that blade so long as i don't have any crossover files here's another crossover file that blade diff 4 we definitely don't want that this time we'll stick with valeria's sword diff thank you very much so now we have our custom uv map diff map and a generic blue square for our normal map and a few modifiers here but we're not going to call this blades of hyboria we're going to call this blade of valeria sorry juggernaut I'm just going to pop in the name of one of my actual supporters. Um, not his actual name. <laughs> he would have had some imaginative parents to give him a name like that. But um, as you know, I've got a patron running <laughs> and a donation system as well. Uh, every time somebody donates to me, I essentially make a bonus product to release to the community. Uh, this is one of my bonus products, the Valeria Sword. <coughs> so, um, 
it's been delayed in its release so that I can create this video of me creating it and you know share that with you so it's been nice to just get through this and get on with it I know it's taken me to like well we haven't finished yet have we <laughs> but it's definitely not an Atlantean blade we're dealing with here this is Valeria horse chopper we're dealing with so we define within the weapon manufacturer the weapon model and the weapon type Valeria is the name of the blade under the items, under the weapons, options. The weapon model is going to be our diff map. Why on earth are you called Blade of Valeria now? Sorry, gang, I've not been concentrating. This is a copy kid. That is a copy kid. Any make Valeria Sword Diff Kid. Valeria's Horse Chopper will rename. I believe it is a scimitar. Jesus. I know there's something wrong here that I'm going to regret, but never mind. Save it up. We are now going to create a start to test our sword. But all of the resources we're going to need to create a, a delicious Valeria Conan sword start are, are in the Conan folder. Shouldn't take me too long to, uh, to move them across. In fact, it won't matter. I'll add the sword to Valeria. When you add a blade to a new character and a start, remember to set the weapon level here. That will determine the UV map of the weapon that they're holding. So Juggerwolf um, is the maker of this one and his name will represent the uv map that we're using for the valeria scimitar it's not connected to the scimitar itself and we can't export our blender so if we want it to look sexy and groovy in the game itself then we have to uh we have to assign a manufacturer grand let's save that I've given the blade to Valeria in my Conan and Valeria start. These weapons don't belong in her mod. So until I remove them or move the resources across, which I will when I make Conan the Barbarian mod proper, um, then this mod will be dependent on that mod because I haven't messed with the files. Well, I don't care, it's dependent. I'm just testing it right now. It's fine. Crikey, I hope it works. <laughs> so, uh, right, let's save it. Let's close it. Let's load up Kenshi, and I can amuse you by showing you how long it takes my computer to load this game. Right, we make sure Valeria's sword is ticked.
Now that Conan's not ticked, you see how the mod dependency kicks in. Let's go. And I know you won't mind me rolling up while this loads. Um, mind you, I can roll up and regale you with poetry at the same time if you like, but uh, I can imagine the thought of me reciting poetry to you after... I don't know how many hours we've been together now, but... Um, I can imagine that would be a torment for you. So I'll, I won't bother you with that. But what I will do is perhaps put a little bit of Conan themed music on over the load screen because uh, I love Conan <laughs> and uh, I'm really proud of the way this mod's coming along we're really close and I'm only sorry that you're gonna see so many unfinished raw elements to it before I get a chance to refine them before release but Let's not worry ourselves about that. We're building the future and our goal is to put Valeria's sword inside the game. If the game crashes to desktop now and I lose my recording, <laughs> I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna go and kill a cat. <laughs> jokes, jokes, jokes. I would never do that. But uh, I wouldn't be happy. Wouldn't be a happy bunny at all after that 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 epic recording. I had hoped my mods were going to be as sorry, my tutorial videos were going to be as good as my mods. But um, I'm a much better mod creator than I am a tutorial video creator. So I'm sorry they're not more snazzy and animated bits, but um, as you can see, I, I've often got a lot of time to fill while I wait for my Kenshi to load, while I wait to be able to test. And this is one of the reasons I've created Patreon, is a chance to give people the opportunity to speed my work up. I need to spend a few grand, get some RAM, get some terabytes of memory, and then one of the forerunning mod creators for Kenshi won't have to wait like a moron around for minutes, minutes at a time. Sometimes I'll test a mod 20, 30 times before release. Hours and hours and hours of development time wasted in load screens, which is a real shame. But that's not the worst of it. I can crash to desktop at this point, lose all my work. Everything. The blend. I haven't saved it yet. The uh the tutorial video, everything. Which happens when you run out of memory, and I run out of memory quite a lot because I'm constantly filling my overfull hard drives up with more mods for you guys. And I hate to delete them. Here we are. Alright, Conan looking boss. Golden patron special Atlantean sword there. They'll be queuing up Conan. <laughs> right, let's turn his skin down. One day I'm going to save a bod so I don't have to do this every time Conan loads in. But, um... We will do him a custom air. We can't have that. Uh, Valeria's... Oh! <laughs> it's huge! That is about twice the size I would expect Valeria's sword to be. And it's going to need to hang off her hip. And it's spawned in her back. But did the game crash? Is the game broken? No. Um... I'm having some trouble getting the hair to um, be represented on this uh, opening screen. 
But I did make a perfect hair. It's got really nice saturation, really nice lines. Oh, sorry guys. Oh. Um just gonna sort her waist out. Frame is too large. Breasts are too far apart. Rest size, they are slightly larger. Leg length longer. Overall height lower. Hips just slightly less far apart. All the armor's custom built by me as well. The boots I made, the braces I made, and the, uh, the dress as well, and the jewel. So there it is. It looks every bit as lovely and as great as I had hoped. Um, for my edits, I will be going back in and lowering the brightness of the diff map on the handle here to reduce that gloss so it looks a lot more like Conan's here. Or a Valeria. Show us what you got. Come on, Conan. Not your fight, mate. Perfect chance for a screenshot? Maybe. Angles, darlings, angles. It's not a bad bit of blade, you know. Ah, oh, I can scale this and get this out tomorrow. This is not going to be a problem. Excellent. Try taking your screenshots without the cursor on screen. Absolutely perfect, friends. I could not be happier. Conan and Valeria are finally going to be the ultimate team. All we need now is a full set of Conan the Barbarian armor. And we will be ready to rock. Help her, Conan. You know, that Nippru sells the wings is far too OP. Time to get the perfect screenshot. I don't think I've ever seen anybody knocked out quite so hard as that. But it's a shot of the sword again, come on. Maybe lower the brightness, but it's nice. And when it's got the uh, scabbard on there, guys, you're going to know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sexy, sexy. I might do a second one uh, for the scabbard, but I think all the basics have been covered here. Uh, FCS insertion into Blender, um, into the game itself. A full screencast, beginning or end. I don't know how long that took me, but... Um, and it's not perfect, as you can see. There's There's plenty left to be done on it. Um, but as a as a straight off run, showing you how to get the uh, the proportions correct, um, I could not have been happier with that. I think size wise, what we need to do is to model this on a katana. Make sure the blades of an equivalent length. But thank God that's done. Now I can finally get back to finishing the Conan the Barbarian mod and get back to Obi-Wan so that we can have a lovely, lovable 
warm faced Obi Wan for May the fourth. Uh, and then it's back to the uh, the patron projects. If you guys like this video, think I've got more to offer the community, think you want something done, you want it in Kenshi, uh, MIG Productions is producing. We are taking commissions. If you want to uh, get your favourite computer game character or your favourite group of people or a manga or an anime or a real human being that actually exists in the real world or a piece of armor uh into the game then we'll do it for you and uh, i hope that you can see from the quality of the work that we're currently producing that it's likely to be as good as any professional product out there and uh it'll be yours simply for being a part of MIG Productions. Every last member gets a chance to name a thing they want to have happen. Um, so if you're interested, follow the links below. Come join us at our Patreon. I do have a donate link. Um, I've been up till half past five in the morning here, creating a more tutorial for you. I've been doing it smoking butt rollies. I don't have any food. I'm going to go hungry all day tomorrow and wait for the first to come round on my Patreon to hit. So don't think I'm Mr. Moneybags. Don't think if you send me a donation, I'm not going to be able to spend it right away on not being starving hungry. Um, please don't presume I'm in a good position just because I'm highly skilled and I've got a lot of love for you guys, the community. So know that if you make a donation, it will make a difference. And um, know that if you don't, it doesn't matter. I can't make donations. I'm poor. A lot of people are a lot poor right now. So please understand, all my mods are free. All my work is free. Donations only, support through Patreon comes with real advantages and gifts for you if you do decide to come on board on that extra level. For everybody else, guilt-free. Uh, these mods, these tutorial videos are free. I will never hold the community to ransom. And uh, it is my hope I will see check you around uh, for mod tutorial number three, uh, in which we will start crafting armor from scratch and showing you how to UV map that, weight it properly, uh, get your armpits all sorted out. Um, not in terms of having a shower yourself, but in terms of um, making sure the UV maps and the weightings and the uh, armature rig don't mess up around those armpit areas when you're rigging your own armor up. And I've figured out a few tips that I think you're going to find very, very useful. So forgive the length of this tutorial video. I've been Mops is Gone. It's been a pleasure as always entertaining you in my mod palace. Uh, I'll hope to see you at the Patreon uh, page. I'll hope to see comments and hopes from you spread across the globe as uh, the world sets itself on fire over the awesome productions uh, of MIG Productions. And uh, thanks to everybody as well that's given their support in creating these videos. Um, Automoti. If it hadn't have been for you, there probably wouldn't have even been a patron for people to support through. So, you know, if it hadn't been for your support there at the beginning when I had nothing, then I would have been really, really desperately hungry and had no money at all and done all this. So thank you, Automoti. And I've done this mod tutorial for you. Uh, it's outside of my patron targets. I'm only supposed to do one, but because of you, mate, and my my respect for you, and my you, the fact you've inspired me, I've done this for you. Uh, to all the new patrons who've come on this month, thank you guys as well. Uh, so much generosity this month. Uh, we're, we're three times bigger than we were this time last month. Um, that's how amazing this month has gone for us. Next month's full of amazing. Uh, for all of you guys out there that aren't in the stream, we are making Star Wars Ultimate. Uh, the ultimate Star Wars game, the ultimate Kenshi mod. Um, we've got so much else on the cooker as well. Um, I don't want to talk about it though because uh, <laughs> I want people that don't like me stealing my ideas or my work before I make it. Uh, and I can't tell who's going to be watching this video. So best of luck and best of love to you all.
Uh, have a great life and have fun modding and hopefully we'll be seeing loads of new high quality weapons um, referenced over reference shots in the background um, and proper well presented UV maps drawn from reference shots uh, come through into your work uh, in the weeks and the months and to come and uh, have a great life until I speak to you next. I've been Mops is gone. Best of life. Life and love to the lot of you. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>